this is a Mila complete C2 cat and dog power line, the sort of what came after the Mila S5 and in middle first generation EU busting 1200 watts. This belongs to a cleaner client of mine, it's one of her vacs and apparently it has sucked up water and sounds terrible, can I fix it? And she's right, it does sound terrible. Turn it on, that will help massively. But it runs better than I would have expected for a machine full of water. So, let's take it apart and see what we see and hope that we can reduce that sound dramatically. Let's have a look. Yes, hello, my vacuum cleaner and Mila chums. How are you today? Yeah, this is actually pretty flipping tidy for being a cleaner vac. I, mean, I haven't really looked at it too closely. Oh, we have no small tools as per usual. I'm amazed the tool door still works as well as it does. But in here, on first glance, it doesn't look too catastrophic. We have a brand new genuine bag fitted, very clean inside and out, and quite dry. I would have expected to see it a lot worse than that. Oh, the, the pre-motor filter does need a slight clean. <laughs> yeah, look, half of it stayed behind. Um, okay, but again, that's not, you know, that's not terrible for anything else. I think what's happened is she cleaned it up and then, you know, just realised that the noise is terrible because I can see the motor fan case there and all doesn't look too pretty so I think we're going to see more blood and gore after we take this apart a bit more so despite saying C2 on the top it is just a Mila S5 so we'll take that top bit off then we can push and manoeuvre these tabs up one, two, come on. A fighty one. Come on. Ah, there we go. Like so. Then we can remove the rear glamour cap, which reveals the rest of the screws. Just before I crack the top off, we will give it a vacuum out with this Mila Compact C2. The shape that the place this has kept the name. It makes finding parts so much fun. There we go. Look. That'll do. Cleaning a meter with a Frankenstein meter. How lovely. Right, pop you to one side and in theory this should lift off and go off over there. Although. I'll pull the cable through, we need to look at the plug as well, it doesn't have an original plug and the one that it does have is a little bit battered, so yeah, we shall get on to that as well. Then there's just, it is quite rusty, you know, there's a couple of rusty screws. Oh, yeah, this back one here, how interesting. Right, take off. Oh, I'm bleeding. No, don't get blood all over the customer's vacuum. Go multi plug out, then there's a screw under there, a screw in this back corner, and then this part lifts off. Woo! Yeah, that has been very wet indeed, but well, quite wet. Seen worse, I'm not gonna lie. I mean it's it's had a splattering of water through it, but obviously runs perfectly well. This isn't anywhere near as bad as I was expecting. This is nice and clean. So yeah, I think we're gonna be lucky here and perhaps just need to oil or re-grease the bearings. So let's get into a good old fashioned motor tear down. 
Okey dokey then, I've got a plaster on my finger for possibly the next five minutes until it falls off. Tap the fan case down and up. normally it will just slide off, but of course this one, we've got a bit of corrosion in the mix, so we're going to have to do just a little bit of tappy tap. Not a lot, because you don't want to bend the fan case, just to get it off of its rusty lip. If it's not wet, it's a lot easier. There we go. Right, here is our fan. Ooh, it's a little bit slow. Put your hand under the cloth, otherwise make this cut look like the nothing it really is. Oh, I've hurt myself before. Oh, okay, yeah. Corrosion. Unfortunately, although the battery is quite low, me little Makita 12 volt, this isn't going to cut that. So we'll grab something a little bit beefier, make sure it is in the right mode. This is the alternate thread, so we're in do up. There we go, straight away. God, this thing has been quite handy. So, nut, washer, fan, and then, oh, are you going to come off nicely? Or are you going to have corroded in and you're going to bring the motor housing apart with you? Bring this video to an abrupt end as I write off a Mila. Of course you're not, come on. You've just got to lever this off because it's a very tight fit anyway. Again, it's quite corroded now. Could almost get a bear and pull on it, but it is walking up slowly. Eventually, this bottom washer will come off as well. Oh, bother, it's happened. Rather than moving the washer, I was actually moving the entire armature and it has punched through the top of the motor casing. I'm hoping that there's just enough space for me to squeeze this bearing puller under and get it the heck off because we've now got to repair this motor casing. My expectations and motivations have gone dramatically downhill now. I cannot lie. Oh, bother. That is such a shame. Yeah, as soon as that happens, it's almost curtains because it's all that stops the bearing from coming out. Although, yeah, it's so flimsy, it can't have been doing much. We'll see. Let's move on and, mm, yeah, rusty bearing there. Oh, that looks rather interesting. But what we're going to do first is remove the carbons. And I like to put them back in exactly the same way they came out. Because, yeah, these motors are renowned for being fragile, fussy sods even without being full of water. So we're going to do this so that the carbons go back in the same way, orientation, everything. And they're not bad. They're okay. Ah, what are you doing? You're fine, I guess, because the machine runs. And then finally, screwdriver onto the back, little tap, out she come. Ooh. I don't think I should care too much about the state of that motor housing because this thing can't have many more hours left to live. I think we might be okay. Clean the armature up a little bit. Then we're going to take a, probably actually get a blade, and we'll pop the top of the bearing off. Then Oh, these are always fun. You've got to remove this cage here. Now, if you're careful and leave all the balls in exactly their position, ah, you can take your tube of grease off the... Oh, oh, you try and pipe the tube of grease and stick a nice few blobs into the balls like so grease your balls up folks then oh my goodness where did the little cage go this needs to go back on until it pushes down in between your balls like so then you can rotate it and smush the grease around a little bit there we go obviously there's far too much on there but i'm going to try and keep some of it on there to go underneath this bit like so. Now I'm going to leave a little bit on the threads actually because it needs all the help it can get and that's as good as it's going to get. We're going to do pretty much exactly the same to this back bearing if I can get 
the shielded cover off. Oh, yeah, oh look, this one's the other way around, hasn't got a cage. Look, chunky bits, how nice. Don't know how much better it's going to be, but there is only going to be one way to find out. Put a fair bit in you. I don't pack it all the way. I put almost too much in, but only on three quarters. So by the time it's run around, it sort of evened itself out and, you know, has spread itself a little bit. I reckon that's, that's going to be better, isn't it? It's about all it can have, really, because state of that, I'm not caring too much about it. We're going to smash the motor back together, probably leaving these, because I haven't changed where the bearings sit, and my goodness, they're not going to move now unless I pull them off. So we're going to, we're going to hope. I'm going to tap it down. I mean, again, these things can't have been doing much. The flimsy, stupid pieces of plastic. It's do or die for it, basically. So we're back together as Amila C2 Complete Cat and Dog. Is it any better or is it any worse? <laughs> Say worse, my fears have been realised. Just taking these flipping things apart <sighs> makes them run worse than they are. Now, that now smells bubbly as well. So I would imagine that it's not quite sat in the right place, which was my main concern. So I think I'm going to have to glue these back on and then put the motor back together. Although, you know, everything should be sat in the right part compared to that. Um, I don't really give it another go. Did that work? No, it didn't. I scented it a bit more. It span a bit freely. As I sadly feared, looking at the state of that armature, just moving the carbon brushes in and out, of causing such a problem. That doesn't sound healthy. I'm not sounding healthy at all. But it's just knackered, sadly. This is why you never get your Mila wet, because it might look nice on the outside, but the motor is just made of really ferrous material that corrodes instantly. And does stuff like this. A very nice machine, trashed because it needs a specific motor, which is impossible to find because they're renowned for burning out. Do I tell you, I'm not a fan of modern Mila. <sighs> so, fortunately, no, it's on this occasion not possible to resurrect this motor. What do you think might be done with this? I mean, it's written off. She's, you know, she's a cleaner. She said, could I do anything with it? The answer is no. She'll, she'll go and find another one. That's fine. But yeah, what would you do in this instance? Would you persevere? Would you stick another motor in it? I mean, if I didn't have two Mila C2 compacts, stand up. It, it would be a bit of a harder choice for me to make, but I know out of these two which one I prefer. And despite its vax in it, it is this one. <sighs> well, sorry to disappoint, but thank you very much for watching. I hope that you still enjoyed, and I and some other Mullard Mila will see you soon. Bye bye. <laughs>